In this video, we will see the third type of modelization technique that is subroutines. So let us see the agenda for this session. So first we will see the overview of subroutines and then we will see the types of subroutines. So subroutines are nothing but a mini program that consists of sequence of statements. Moreover, subroutines are used to prevent redundancy in, in the statements of a ABAP program. And subroutine is started with the form statement here and can be ended with a end form. So within this form and end form, we can define our variables and execute our ABAP statements. And this is the declaration part that is form and end form. And we can call this that is implementation part is done with the help of perform. So there is we have started our form and ended our form. So this is our declaration part of the subroutine. So if we have to call this form, that is if we have to call the subroutine, we have to use perform statement. So using this perform statement, we can implement our subroutine. So let us see the type of types of subroutine. There are two types that is local subroutine and global subroutine. So if the subroutine definition that is declaration and implementation are available in the same program, that means it is a local subroutine. And if in case of global subroutine, that is the routine definition, subroutine definition is available in different program and the implementation is available in another program, that means it is a global routine. Now we will see how to pass values from a declaration part to the implementation part. So as discussed, subroutine is also on the way of modelization. So subroutine is just a simple mini program that consists of sequence of statements. So as we did in the case of include or maybe function modules, here also we have to de declare subroutines and we can declare subroutines either in the same program or in the different program. If we are using the in the same program, then it is local subroutine. And if we are using in this different program, then it would become a glo global subroutine. So here I will just show you an example. And there are three ways that we can use that is pass by value, pass by reference. And one, one more is there that is uh, pass by value and return. So I will be showing you each and every steps for all these three. Pass, first I will show you for pass by reference how we are passing the value uh, using reference that is both actual and the final parameters would be same. So here we go. So this is the program that we have made. So here I have declared a report Z subroutine and then there is data A which is of the type I that is integer we have declared it as A equals to 10. So here we are just writing before calling the subroutine value of a is a. So here obviously it would be 10 itself it, since we have defined it as 10. Then we are using perform. This is actually the implementation of subroutine that here we are calling the subroutine that we have made it here. So this portion is the declaration of subroutine and this portion is implementation that is calling of subroutine. So here we are calling pass by reference subroutine using a. So this is our actual parameter and this is our formal parameter. So in case of pass by reference, both actual and the formal parameter would be referring to the same memory location. So if any changes are made to the formal parameters, the actual parameters will also be get affected. So here this is the formal parameter. We are changing value of the formal parameter here that is fa plus 10. So from here the value was 10, we have passed it to here. So fa is initially 10, we are adding 10 to it. That means fa value is now 20. So this value is been returned here. So currently this value would be 10 and this value would be 20. So this was passed by reference. So both the actual and formal parameters are referring to same memory location and the both fa and a would be affected, get affected if a fa's value is changed. So if I just run it, it would be 10 and 20. So fine. This was an example by pass by reference. Now we have pass by value. So in pass by value, we are referring uh, both the actual and formal parameters are referring to the separate memory locations. Therefore, and moreover, this uh, if we are changing anything uh, to the formal parameter, it won't get affected to the actual parameter. So here A is our actual and FA is our 
formal parameter moreover if if we are declaring as formal parameter we have to make use of value and with the bracket so now we can identify that we are passing by value so I will just save it and check it and activate it now if we run here what would be the output from here the outputs would be 10 itself we are making use of pass by ref which is this one itself we can make it different pass by val and here we are using using and here using val so this indicates that is it is pass by value so whatever changes we are making here it won't get reflected here so if it is not re getting reflected here the value of a here would also be 10 itself so let's see just by running it I have saved it checked it and activated it now if we run both the outputs would be 10 itself so here we go both the outputs are now 10 itself so we have covered pass by reference and pass by value now come pass by value and return for that in this case both actual and formal parameters would be referring to the separate memory location itself but if any changes are made to the formal parameter that is FA it would be the actual parameter would also be changed so in this case it would be same as pass by reference so for that if we have to make changes here we have to make it changing we have to change this using to changing here we go moreover here also while declaring the formal parameter we have to change it changing value ok so this is it now if we have changed the value of uh, FA here it would be reflecting here in A that means if I just write it as 20 so here it would print as 10 itself but here it would print as 30 let's see run it we can also change the value of this this is just a simple notation we can name it anything for the time being I am just using the same itself let's check it save check and activate so this whole is a local subroutine implementation that we are done since we are declaring the subroutine locally and calling it also locally itself hence this is a simple example of local subroutine now if we just run it it would be 10 and 30 so this is ok so I hope this uh, concept are clear to you that's it for this video thanks for watching